about it anyway. Um, okay, group data. Group data. Hmm. Okay, so just a short little lesson on group data. And then notice group data is just one page front and back. So then we're going to whip straight into after that three, four, and five, which is mean, median, mode. Because you know this stuff already, but we just need to do a quick overview of it to make sure you know how to do it again and all that kind of stuff. And on your calculator. A uh, group frequency table showing the distribution of reaction times. So you probably done in science, did you do experiments with reaction times where you had to catch the ruler? Mm -hmm. Someone released a ruler, you had to catch it, and you had to convert it to a, re a reaction time yeah. and all that kind of thing, yeah. Um, <coughs> Okay, so is it, according to this one, what is the lowest possible? Uh, what's the lowest possible reaction time? One forty-one. <laughs> I can't say anymore. Um, yep, one forty-one. What's the highest one? Two Yay! Now, what kind of data is reaction time? Mm -hmm. Continuous. Yeah. Yeah. Quantitative continuous. Yes, because it's measured. It's not like saying the number of minutes. There's nothing telling us to get to round it to a certain amount. Quantitative continuous because it's measured with a stopwatch, or to be honest, like I think when we did the experiments, we measured it with a ruler and then that got converted to a time. But still, the ruler, if you measure something with a ruler, it's continuous anyway. So, either way, it's continuous. Um, according to this, little babies, what was the modal class? According to this table of results, yeah, how do you know that? Yeah, and some people will think it's 9, but it's not. It's 181, 200. Which one has the highest frequency? Uh, what was the least common uh, class interval? Oh, yeah. There's only one person has an extremely slow reaction time. Really slow reflexes. <laughs> and then what we're asked to do is display the data on a histogram. Now, on a histogram, are the bars touching or not touching on a histogram? Good guess? Touching. Touching, yes. <laughs> so bars are touching. Um, because uh, histograms are when you've got continuous data. So that means there shouldn't be any break in the x-axis. Bars are touching. Um, if it's a bar chart, it's more discrete data, not so touching. that's why they're not touching. Yeah, good. Yeah, bar charts are not touching. And why they, they should touch? Because why? Because, uh, because the data on a histogram is continuous data. Okay. So meaning like this data, there's no break in the data. Okay. Whereas if we're talking about discrete data, like um, how many siblings you have, you have either four or five, you don't have 4.5 siblings. So discrete data, bar charts or column graphs, you have breaks, histograms, they're touching. What's this? Oh, that's just something about the reaction time. So we've got to make a lovely little graphy graph. And how high does our frequency need to go up? Up to nine at the most. So hopefully we've got enough space to do nine. And <coughs> histogram, we don't have to start at 141, but it's not really wrong if you do. But do some people do those little lightning bolts? So it mean, yeah. do you do that in science? Like, does that mean you jump up to 141? Yeah. 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 So hopefully you've got some kind of straight edge. And then I'm going to start at 141 here. Oh, what are my categories again? I should look at it right here. Yeah, some funny hooby dooby. Um, 140. Actually, well, technically, 141. If you want to do 140 to 160. Do we have to draw little arrows? Like on the axis? Uh, they do on theirs, don't they? Oh, yeah. I don't do the arrows, uh, but I do label them. On a histogram, I wouldn't do the arrows necessarily. If you do, it's not wrong, though. But um, you definitely just need a label. The label's the important thing, not the arrows. On a histogram. 60, 80, 200, 
So hopefully you're using nice um, rulers to make yours, or straight edges at least. Um, I think I'm going to do a before and after, so I'm going to pause it. Yes! There we go. <laughs> so that's our um, histogram. We'll skip ahead and that's our histogram. Hopefully you've used a ruler so you don't have any hoover doovers. And there should be no, um, the data on the bottom is continuous, so there's no, um, there's no breaks in the bars. Um, great. I think you know how to do that. Um, <clears throat> now, um, this one's more just like interpreting a histogram. So again, I'm trying to kind of combine it a little bit with psychology. I might zoom out a bit. Isabella, Isabella. <laughs> okay, below is a histogram showing a distribution of scores on the Beck Depression Inventory. For example, the Beck Depression Industry Inventory, or BDI, is something similar to this. I, was, I could show it to you another time if you want. Um, so here's a histogram showing a distribution of scores on the Beck Depression Inventory. Um, here it is, by the way, the Beck Depression Inventory. It's a self-report, so basically it's a self-evaluation, uh, measured on the presence and severity of depression symptoms. It examines an individual's emotional state in a two-week period prior to the evaluation. Um, so imagine these are the results from the Beck, Beck Depression Inventory score. <coughs> <laughs> so we've got... Uh, values of 0 to 9, apparently we're assuming it's kind of continuous, so whatever the scale was, it must have somehow been continuous. Maybe they didn't have to round to a decimal place or anything like that, I don't know, just by the way it's been displayed. And we've got the frequency along here. So then we're just asked to interpret, sometimes you're asked to just interpret the histograms. First of all, what type of data is uh, being displayed and how do you know? Yeah, because we don't know if like, you know, I would assume if it was a scale of 1 to 10 or 1 to 100, they have to rate themselves on. I would have thought it would have been discrete. But the way it's been displayed, it makes the fact that the histogram makes us think it's maybe continuous. So perhaps they were asked if they could rate themselves anywhere on a continuum. Like, they, perhaps there was a number line and they just had to point to a spot and they felt they were. Um, that's, that's a way to make it continuous. Quantitative continuous. Um, um, as to say bars not touching. Oh, bars are bars touching. touching. Yeah, sorry, yeah, thank you. Bars are touching. Yeah, so it is possible, yeah. Perhaps they were asked to rate themselves, but they were given a line and from what, 0 to 100, and they had to point to a, pick a point on the line. Then that would make the data continuous. So you said something about yeah, I was just trying to think, like, you know, if you was a self-evaluation and maybe you had to rate yourself from 0 to 100 how depressed you are, kind of, I was thinking that would seem a bit more um, discreet, wouldn't it? Like you rate yourself, like, you know, yeah. 0 to 100. So yeah, so how could it be continuous? I was thinking the only way that it could be, so imagine instead they kind of gave you the survey, instead they gave you a giant line, and they said from 0 to 100, and they asked you to to mark your spot on the line. Mm -hmm. And then that's a way, like say how depressed they knew maybe that if they're feeling really depressed they'd probably put here. So then then that's a way it could suddenly be continuous. <coughs> yeah, I don't know how they did the survey though. But just the fact that the histogram, um, the bars are not touched, and this is kind of like insinuates that it was continuous data. Um, okay, and yeah, what is the modal class? That's nice and easy. Yeah, how do you know? Yeah, it's got the highest bar. So highest frequency, 10 to 19. 10 to 19, and that was the, at the highest bar. And according to the BDI scoring on the right, um, describe the group surveyed. Um, so you kind of want to take into account what the histogram kind of looks like and the results. So the 10 to 19 group, what kind of symptoms, the modal group, what kind of symptoms do you think they have? Mild yeah. depression. Yeah. Mild depression. Um, but there's, overall, what would you say? Like, because there's this group, they have mild depression, but there's kind of that as well. And the rest are all kind of low. I would say they're sort of mild and they have like moderate 
Yeah, so that's one way you could say. You could say majority either seem to have mild depression or what was the numbers for that? 50 to 59. Ooh, or severe depression. Seems to be, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it does seem. It suddenly goes up gradually and then bang. Suddenly you're immediately severe. Yeah, that's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> this is a weird thing. I must have gotten this from a different kind of like scale that came from that. Okay, so that was me attempting to kind of blend psychology into it. So, um, quite a few people are either mild, mild or severely depressed. <laughs> quite a few people are either mildly or severely depressed. That's my view. Mildly or severely depressed. Hardly anyone was minimal depression. So minimal depression was really low. There's only like three people that had minimal depression. And even fewer people have kind of the moderate to in between. It. So, well, you know, very few people have the moderate. So it seems to be they're either, it must be a very popular thing to be either mildly depressed or severely depressed, according to that survey. Amongst those survey respondents, that is. Yeah, mainly because the two spikes were kind of in the severely and the mildly. <laughs> That's just one thing you could say. Maybe people, like maybe those who are really severely depressed, like they acknowledge it, they realize it. And those who are mildly are like, yeah, it's okay, I'm mildly depressed. But to say you're moderate, maybe, is kind of the mild people don't want to say they're moderate, maybe. I'm trying to guess why this would be the case. Why doesn't it not go up to 100? Yeah, I don't know. Some scale. Perhaps just no one. Yeah, and why does the graph go 60 to 69 when this ends at 63? It might be, maybe they had to answer certain, there was a number of questions and it's more like their total score or something. Is it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. The number and then the total score it pops out with. Anxiety, yeah. Yeah, because stress could go into anxiety, and like anxiety seems to tip over into depression sometimes. Yeah, it can, it can, not always, but it can. Fun. Okay, here it is, mean, medium, and mode. Yay! You know this probably inside and out. I'm sure. Um, the three most basic calculations of central tendency. Um, so different ways of kind of measuring the center of the data. There's the mode, the median, and the mean. Popular, uh, median, middle, and uh, the mean, the sum of scores divided by the number of scores. So we want to practice because we're non-calculator style people. So I've got three examples, one here and two on the next page, where we want to practice doing these three things non-calc, just to keep our non-calc skills brushed up. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, so feel free to Yes. 
We're doing these three notes. Owen, get rid of that notepad. Okay, we will have a non calc paper. So, um, do you remember, similar to CIE, how many modes can you have at most? One. Oh, in our course, we're allowed to have two. What do you mean? You're allowed yeah, to have two like modes. The, the modes. Yes. Yeah. So, see how there's two modes in what? this one? So you're allowed to have two modes? Ah, did it? <laughs> ah, seriously? Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's just five. Uh, oh, yeah. you definitely asked me to order one. I don't put it in my Yeah, if it was, then there would be two modes. So you, yeah, you're allowed two modes, but you're not allowed three modes. If there's three modes, then you say no modes. Darn it. So that's our medium. You're allowed to have two? Yes. In our course, yeah. We're allowed to have two. You can have one mode or two modes. Can't have three modes. Oh, I thought that was an eight. It's a five. Well, medium is five. Yeah. Five modes. 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 If there's two modes, they say the data is bimodal. And the mean. Five by one on the phone. <laughs> five, it's five by one. So this is non calc. Oh, it's a five by eleven. Huh? It's a five by eleven. It's a five by nine. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's a five by nine. It's a five by nine. Sorry. We know that nine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, in that case, you would know that. All oh, right. So five and one nine, or five point one recurring. Good. <laughs> yeah, because one nine you would know. Yeah, anything over nine is just like four nights is point four recurring. But you can leave. <laughs> like you can leave it as a simplified fraction. It's fine. Like I would leave it like that. I just leave it like that. Um, okay, next one. Uh, five, yeah, because there's a middle number. Yeah, there's another two. Like with different numbers of the data set. So you can see different types of data. Are you guys getting no mood? Yeah, what if there's no mood? Yeah, you just say no mood. And this time I've not got to make sure I divide it by the right number, so it'll be a ten. Practicing our non calcs.
You can't have more than two modes in our course. So you could also say 13 and 3 7 Yeah, 13 and how many remainders? Improper fraction simplifies time. Why are we math packets full of mental disorders? Yeah, so why are we doing math packets? Yeah, psych and stats go well together quite well. So trying to kind of make it cross curricular. Okay, let's go. So, yeah, so this is where you need your calculators out, use your GDCs. Find the mean and median, not the mode, because the GDC doesn't find the mode for this data set. <laughs> so if you forget how to use the GDC um, to find the mean median, what? You would, yeah, you would chuck an extra three zeros on the end. Yeah, but I would just plug these numbers in, and then you just realise to put the word thousand at the end if you want. Which means I had like a good 20% of their population, so I might as well just the entire Could be. But a, they have a very high population, yeah. There's a really big population in the US. So, uh, okay, guys, um, if you're not sure what this is, this is um, annual number of percent distribution of ambulatory care visits by setting type according to a diagnosis group. So, ambulatory care visits. So, ambulance people visiting them. Um, according, trying to see if there was a, a bit of a com, uh, connection between if they had mental disorders and the amount of ambulance visits and that kind of thing. Um, so this is practicing using your GDC. The GDC doesn't find the mode, but it does find the mean and the median. Can you see the app? Yeah, your calculator. Yeah. Just one, yeah, just one. So, uh, Kelvina, is this bivariate data or univariate data or anyone? Oh, you weren't here, you didn't know. Yeah. Yeah, you weren't here, I forgot, sorry. Um, anyone want to have a guess? Is it univariate or bivariate? Yeah, because it's just one list of data. Um, and it says, why should we, why should we enter, should we enter this first number or not? Nah. This is, this is like what all of these are added up, yeah. So don't include the first number. Um, so the answer to this is no. As that's the total. This is the total. So you don't include that. Yeah, don't include that because this is kind of like mental disorders, and then these are kind of sublisted. We'll just enter those ones instead. So no, as it's the total. No. So instead 
Did they pop the total up the top? If that's no I. <laughs> no comma. No as is the total. No. As is the total. Regular. Um, so we're going to plug these babies into our calculators and see if we all get the same number. So give you a mo give you a minute or two to do that because it takes ages. Oh, so girls, you should all be put. Kavina, come in. Should all be entering this in your calculators. Yeah. Into the list. Yeah. Oh, it gives you a decimal, does it? Oh. What kind of... Let's say to the nearest whole number, just for this one. Yeah. Yeah, let's say, imagine, we'll say the question, imagine I asked for the nearest whole number. So we need the mean and we need the median. You might need to scroll down to get the median. Like they should come up with the same list. <laughs> I can't <laughs> interpret. <laughs> Too much cognitive demand. So I'm about to record again. Okay, so what kind of numbers are we getting for the mean? If we're still going. Five, three, nine, three, five, three. Huh? I got five, seven, five, six. That's what I got. What's that? Your accident should say L1. L1. I got five, I got five seven, five, six. Five, seven, five, six? Yeah. Is that the most common answer? I can't remember what it was. I've got it written down for multiple spreadsheets. Five, seven, five, six? Who got five, seven, five, six? Okay, that seems to be the most popular answer. I've got it written down somewhere. Oh, yeah. yeah, you just scroll down. If you scroll down, you'll see the median. Oh. <laughs> yeah, so scroll down. Yeah, uh, once you've got your mean, you just scroll down. <laughs> yeah, the mean was the x stat. What is the, so what, what do you get for your mean? 4.90. You guys agree? Yeah, are you sure? 4.90? Yeah. Yeah. So it is the kind of thing where, like, you get awkward numbers and it's easy to type in the wrong number. So it's always good to just have a read over your data list after you've done stat edit. Read over it again. Um, check it correct before you do the next step um because that because these are all like no method kind of is allocated to these questions so you want to make sure you've got the right numbers in the calculator it's always sure but when do we find out what we got on the computer like you mean like year 11? Yeah, like, like, I don't know why exactly what you are in your exam, when you find out what we got. Or your score? Yeah. Normally it's like the first lesson back, after you've done your, mo done your practice exam. Because you'll have a little, like with, um, maybe imagine like year six, like year seven, eight, nine, you have your little exam week, or two weeks, and then you come back, and first lesson's back is when the teachers give you your exams back. That's normally when you get it, find out your grade. Lots of crying. Yeah. Not normally in IB1, sometimes in IB2. Because mm -hmm. in IB2, you've got so much more to have to remember. Yeah. Um, but in IB1, it's a nice amount to remember. So people generally are okay. In IB1, but in IB2, after what they've done rock. <laughs> I'm just going to pause. <laughs> recording, did it? We are recording. Okay, here we go. So, we are recording. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're now on the next page. Yay. So, when the data is a frequency table, 
So these kind of things. These are when it's a little bit more awkward. Uh, Jason's soccer team recorded the number of goals he scored in a season. The results are as followed. What kind of data is this? Yeah, good. Quantitative discrete. Yep. Because you can only get like you know number of goals is like one point seven goals. Um, what's the lowest score? Zero. Zero. Yeah, and the highest. Yeah, Seattle. <laughs> Yeah, and we see that all the ones in between. Yeah. Yeah, it's not wrong if you don't. You would just have to put in the frequency of zero if you wanted to keep it in there. Um, but yeah, you don't need to in the table if there's none. Oh my goodness, how many zeros have we got? Yeah. Did you get three? Yeah. Oh yeah, you figured that. Okay. How many? Um, Krista, how many ones are there? Three. Okay. Three. Um, Owen, how many twos are there? Four. Okay. I'm gonna stop doing this because it's taking ages. Um. Uh. Kavina, how many threes are there? Five. Are there? Yeah. Who said heaps of threes? Yeah. Cool. Um. Sarah, how many fours are there? One. Lauren, how many fives? Two. Two, okay. Uh, uh, Grace, how many sixes One. are there? Denise, how many sevens? Are there? Oh, great. And that's when the thing is not working. Okay, so I'm just going to have to pause and close and save again. That's what my report card looks like. <laughs> <laughs> to record again. Um, they're just trying to remind you. Um, uh, when we're finding the mean uh, stuff, um, what things need to be in this third column? Frequency down to T. Good guess. That would be like a frequency. Cumulative. I need to do something with the first two yeah, columns. You multiply them together. Yeah. yeah. So, so would you agree it's like MX? Kind of like, yeah, yeah. So I call it a yeah. yeah, good zero. Three, eight, fifteen, four, ten, six, seven, seven three. Then multiply. Second questions based on this. Um, what's our range of goal scores? Yeah, zero to seven. Yeah, so seven minus zero. The range is yeah, seven. Yeah. Max minus min. So it came from here. Max minus min. Nice. Cool. Okay, so what's the modal number of goals scored? Because it's, because it's five times. Yeah, at the highest frequency. Good, yeah. Has the most, yeah. What's the, oh, the median, yeah. Uh, um, so, remember the median, there's a, we've got to find, when it's these awkward tables, you don't just count to the middle of these ones. Because see, there's five threes and there's four twos. So we've now got to count up our frequencies until we realize we're the 10.5th number. It means the average of the 10th and the 11th number. 
Do you have to put them in order to find them? You could, but that's a pain. Two? Yeah, you could do that, but that's a massive pain. So doing these little subtotals are good. Here the total frequency subtotal is seven. Seven plus three. Oh, so the first so would you agree the tenth number's gotta be a one? Yeah, yeah. what did you get? Yeah. I don't know. I have no idea. <laughs> Am I recording this? Oh, dear, I am. <laughs> <laughs> so, three, three plus three, six, six plus four. So, would you agree our tenth number is going to be a two? Yeah. And our eleventh number is going to be a? It's going to be a three. If you actually wrote this out, there'd be three zeros, and then there'd be three ones, and there'd be four twos, and five threes. So, because it's 10.5 is the position, so it's going to be the average of the 10th number and the 11th number. So, what would be the average of those two? 2.5, yeah. So, the 10.5th position, yeah. So, we might want to write like that down. So, the 10th number, number is um, a 2, and the 11th number is a 3. It's hard to write notes on this, because um, it's hard to explain what we just did. The eleventh number is a uh, three, so the median is <laughs> two point five. Median is I need to put more space. Sorry, two point five. The average of that is three. So there's a lot of messing around to find the median in these tables. So you find the median position first using this n plus 1 over 2, n is the total frequency. Find the position, that means it's the average of the 10th and the 11th. Count up to see where the 10th number would be and where the 11th number would be. And in that case it's the average of those two. So all good. And the mean number, that's what I made you find the totals. Can you remember how you find the mean using these purple totals? Just 53 divided by 20. Yeah, 53 divided by 20. F, total fx divided by the total f. Yeah. Yeah. So let's make, if you want I can make you a little um, formula. It'll be the total fx over the total f. Total fx over the total f, which equals 53 over 20. Runner. Go to the dentist. 2.65. 2.65. And there's no units for that because it's just how many goals scored. Some people get confused and think, hey, you can't get 2.65 goals. But that's fine because um, it's a, the mean is an abstract concept. So the mean is an abstract concept, so it can be like 2.65 goals. Because it's not so much saying that in real life they're going to score 2.65. It's just an abstract idea. Yeah, so you can have a decimal, even though goal scored is, is a whole number. Because the mean, it's not something in the real world, it's like an abstract idea. So that's why we can have 2.65. <laughs> what do we have after this? Oh, we'll just continue this next lesson, Joey. Because there's a few extra bits to go. <laughs> And I can give you the box and whisk it box stuff next to uh, Okay, let's stop there.